Okay, so starting off, we have an AMD Phenom 2 X4 B50. This is a dual core, which I have unlocked with a quad core, and I have clocked at about 3.2 gigahertz. The motherboard that I'm currently using is the MSI 970A G46. Um, the memory we got going on here is about 8 gigabytes at 1600 megahertz, along with a Northbridge at 2.2 gigahertz. This is going to be basically a brief showing that a Phenom 4 quad core is still a decent CPU. It can still get good frame rates in most games. Um, I've also paired it with a mid-range R9 270. I'm guessing if you're still using one of these quad cores, you're probably still using an older card. If you're running a newer generation card, like an RX 480, for instance, it's probably a good time to upgrade as well, the CPU. Uh, but overall, the performance is actually pretty decent. Like, I've been able to play most games on the CPU with very low frame drops, uh, and that's, once again, that's running pretty much modern titles. Now, some more some games that require more like a bit higher single threaded scores, for instance, Armor Three and stuff, you're definitely going to notice huge amounts of lag on the CPU. But if you're running a well multi threaded game, it's still going to run pretty damn well on this thing. So I'll be I'm currently running a Cinebench score just to show you guys the synthetic score that I can get compared to more modern CPUs. Afterwards, I will be showing you three games. I'll be showing you guys CS:GO. Uh, StarCraft 2 and the new Battlefront game. Each of these games I will be testing at 1080p and 4K just to show you guys that essentially if you're even running a very high resolution, the CPU will still handle it. And if you're on a more average resolution such as 1080p, it's still a great CPU. CSGO I will also be running at 720p in case you still don't have a 1080p monitor and you kind of just want to see how it works. And once again, this is going to be mostly showing off frame rates. So it's not exactly a perfect showing of the FedOm 2's performance because it's still limited by the graphics card, but it should give you a rough idea. Let's go. I will be using the benchmarking map that you can find in the workshop. One thing to note is you will see a bit of frame dropping during the segment. The reason being is I was trying to record using fraps. Uh, one thing I will say is the FedOm 4 is not very good when it comes to recording. I am also recording directly to an SSD, so the frame dropping is only because of the CPU. But overall, if you're just gaming and not recording, the game runs very well. Uh, in multiplayer, you might get the occasional stutter I've noticed, but I'm also only running the FedOm 2 at about 3.2 GHz. Running it at a higher clock or overclocking the Northbridge any further should help alleviate that. And I'm sure with most of the quad cores that came out, um, it should be fine, honestly. So moving on to StarCraft 2, this game actually kind of surprised me. Because I was playing on the Desert Strike map, as you can see in the footage, which is known for being extremely CPU intensive. Because all the thousands of units that will be on the map at once. Uh, and overall, my frame was actually very good until towards the end of the match, where obviously the frame rate was plummeting because of all the extra units that are putting put on. But it was still roughly playable. It was only a few frames, but honestly, on this map, you can definitely do that. Uh, one thing to consider is this map was extremely was an extreme scenario, and it worked perfectly fine. Now, if you're playing something like a one v one match or two v two or even the campaign, you should see very good frame rates. Mostly, there are going to be drops when it comes to having like crazy things. Uh, when you have thousands of units on the ground, for instance, or during Heart of the Swarm, during some epic battle scenes, there will be like massive frame drops. But overall, for the casual gamer on StarCraft, you can definitely still play it pretty well. Um, playing some games on the arcade, um, some of them will not run very well. The ones that are very intensive in terms of like effects and stuff, or you just have many units, that's not going to work out. But once again, casual stuff or something very small where you don't have to go crazy, you don't have massive things going on, it's definitely still playable. Uh, I definitely would not try any 4v4s. I tried doing this with a CPU, and about halfway through the match, I was running at about 2 or 3 FPS, so definitely not playable at that point. You're Another thing to consider is you can also clock it probably much higher than I've been able to. I have a, once again, this is originally a dual core that I had to unlock the cores. It is not very stable past 3.2, which is a shame, but most quad core phenoms were clocked much higher. You can also probably get the Northbridge way higher. 
uh, overclock the RAM higher as well. That should help alleviate the lower FPS. And it potentially should actually give you, if you could probably get this thing up to about 4.4 gigahertz or 4.1 gigahertz, along with a Norfridge at about 2.6 gigahertz or higher, you could definitely play this game at a decent frame rate compared to most CPUs nowadays. You don't need a high-end rig to really run most of the uh, matches in this game. Of course, crazier things like, you know, 4v4s or very intense 1v1s where you're maxed on both units and everything will create lag. And, of course, having a lower frame rate in StarCraft can really screw you over. But overall, it's it's not a bad CPU. Is it still worth the money? Um, unless you have one, I wouldn't really suggest buying one as of right now. It might be smart to go with a newer generation CPU. Or if you get a chance, you can get a Phenom X6 for a cheap price. Then that's still a pretty decent CPU when it comes to more multi-threaded and newer games. Uh, for instance, a good example of that is the next game we're testing out Battlefront, which actually is a modern title that runs on Frostbite, but I could still get decent frame rates at 1080p with a Phenom 4 at a actually very, very playable FPS. I was able to get above 60 almost the entire time playing at 1080p on medium settings, uh, which kind of amazed me, actually. And overall, there was the there was I guess the occasional stutter that I could see, but so in conclusion, the CPU, as long as the game is very well multi-threaded, even if it's modern, can actually handle them pretty decently well. Of course, it's also running an older mid-range card. If you're running something newer, you're probably gonna get different results. The C the GPU might not be able to the CPU will probably not keep up with the GPU. But if you're running something older and you just want to play modern games, you definitely can still do it. You're probably going to have to lower some settings. You can definitely try to overclock it as much as you can. Uh, but it should work out pretty well, honestly. And newer titles, as long as they're DirectX 12 based, which means they use cores much better, um, should run quite well. Um, Armor 3, though, for instance, which is a quite a new title, runs horribly because it is also heavily reliant on one thread. So if you have any games that heavily rely on the single thread, um, good luck. It's not going to work out well, probably. Uh, even if you overclock it very high, it generally doesn't work out very well. But, it's pretty decent in 2017, to be honest. And I hope you guys enjoyed my first video. Leave a like and comment below. And thank you for your time.